الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد و علیہ وصحب وسلم ام بعد کنٹینیوگ آن دس از دا ففتھ لیکچر اور ففتھ لیسن ان آر سیریز ان دا بک اصول سن بائی امام Ahmed ibn Hanbal rahimahullah ta'ala and we're benefiting from different shurahat, different explanations of the ulama of Ahl sunnah with regards to this very powerful and important treatise which makes clear for us the foundations of the sunnah of Ahl sunnati wal jama'ah what they believe, their creed and their minhaj, their methodology what it means to follow the salafi minhaj the way of the Salaf of this Ummah رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين we reached a portion of the, uh, the, the treaties we already spoke about how the Sunnah explains the Quran as Imam Ahmed said he said وَالسُنَّةُ يَتَفَسَرُ الْقُرْآنِ وَهِيَ الدَّلَاءِ الْقُرْآنِ that the Sunnah it explains the Quran, it explains the, the general meanings of the, it makes the, the general meanings more specific, restricts the general meanings, and it explains the kafia. for example, in the situation of the Salat, or in the example of the Salat, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says, وَأَقِيمُ Salat, Allah orders us to make the prayer. Make the Salat. But the only way we know the Salat on how, how the Kafiyah, how is Salat? You know, we know that not just from the Arabic language, the Arabic language in and of itself, Salat would means dua, supplication, just prayer. But the way that we know how to make Salat is from the Sunnah, the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is by looking into the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and knowing that Salat begins with Takbir saying Allahu Akbar and it ends with Taslim saying Salaamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh So this is how we know what Salat means So that shows us what? That the Sunnah explains the Qur'an It gives its Tafsir for the Qur'an And the next thing the Imam Imam Ahmed mentioned Rahimahullah Ta'ala He mentioned about Qiyas He said وَلَيْسَ fi, fi sunnah qiyas. And he sa- said that there is not In the Sunnah There is no Qiyas There is no uh, Analogy making a, an analogy verse uh, you know making some resemblance between something and, and giving examples which contradict the nasus and making comparisons toward with other things the sheikh begins to explain he says half of Allah ta'ala sheikh al-shatri regarding this this ibarah this this statement of imam ahmed where imam ahmed said walaysa fi sunnah qiyas and there is no qiyas or analogy in the sunnah sheikh shatri half of Allah ta'ala says al-murad bi lafz sunnah huna mu'taqid he said what is meant by the statement of the sunnah in this uh, in this statement what is meant by the sunnah is mu'taqid is uh, related to the aqidah is related to the creed so sunnah here is not related to jurisprudence or something like this but what is meant here when he's talking about qiyas walaysa fi sunnah qiyas he's making reference to the sunnah pertinent to itiqad meaning the aqidah of Ahl sunnah the aqidah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa which is the aqidah of Islam, and which is the aqidah of Ahl sunnati wal jama'ah, that we hold the sun, we hold the, the creed that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa espoused, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us indication for, that this, this is our creed, that it comes from the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, and there's no qiyas in it. The Shaykh then went on to say, So afiha 
سوى فيما يتعلق بصفات الله تعالى أو ما ثبت له أو يجوز عليه أو يمتنع من انتصاف به so he said that this aqida that we're referring to here regardless of whether it relates to the divine uh, sifat the characteristics or attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the almighty or what is affirmed by him that it, it, all these things per- pertinent to creed that it is it's not permissible to make tiyas. So we're talking about creed here again. We're not talking about fiqh issues and things of tahara and wudu and haith and nifas and salat, zakat and things like this and jihad and, and all those other aspects of the religion. But we're talking about aqidah, those things which have to do with creed. Then he mentioned something very beneficial. He explained for us what, about qiyas. He said, وَقَوْلُوا qiyas." And there's a statement about Qiyas. Al Murad bi Qiyas Musawat Baina Mahal wa Akhr. Li tumathilihima fi illa. This is very important. We're going to do our best to, to try to explain this as, as thorough as possible. And he said, and what's meant by Qiyas or analogy here? It's making it's a resemblance, making an analogy between two things making a resemblance between them, two different things, making a resemblance between them due to some reason that they share, a shared reason. And he's going to give us some, a beautiful example here. And this is, this is the beauty of the ulama, is they don't leave it just general like that. They give you mufassal. They give you that, uh, that detailed explanation. Then he says, so that gives us a general meaning of qiyas, what we're talking about. It's making a, 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 a resemblance between two similar, two things, two different things which share a similarity. You know, maybe in their reason regarding the hukum, regarding it, the, the ruling pertinent to it. And the example he gives, وَمِنْ أَمْثِلَةِ هَذَا أَنَّ نَقِيسَ الْيَوْمَ الْمُخَدَّرَاتِ عَلَى الْخَمْرَ الَّتِي كَانَتْ مَوْجُودَ سَابَقًا Sabakan. Fi ithbati wujub al had biha. So the Sheikh said an example of that would be in the modern times, and especially this is pertinent to Saudi Arabia because the Sheikh is a, a Saudi scholar, and this is how the ulama they look at the issue with regards to drugs. So he says that we make a an an, an analogy in this time between mukhaddarat drugs and khamr so they make an analogy between the two because khamr which was uh, present before meaning in the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam talked about khamr he didn't talk about these other drugs because they weren't known those weren't things known but these things fit under it and this is why he says. So we make this this qiyas. It's because of qiyas. We make this resemblance between uh, drugs in this time with that of uh, of khamr or intoxicants or alcohol, but intoxicants in general, which was present during the time uh, in the in the earlier times. And this is because of the fact or and this is uh, and this is because of course they share an illa they share a reason that they both khamr uh, al-aql they both uh, change your intellect they both cover your intellect drugs and alcohol they have an effect on your intellect that's why we uh, you know that's why in in all societies they have a way of dealing with them that they alter your intellect your intellectual capacity, they numb it, or what, what have you, depending on the type of drug. And, and they have those negative effects. So he said that, uh, that they make these resemblance between drugs and khamr, intoxicants, because uh, the intoxicants that were present before, 
in affirming the obligation to make a HUD or a punishment for it. So meaning that in Saudi Arabia, he's mentioning there, uh, spe specifically this pertinent there, they make this resemblance because the uh, in Saudi Arabia, the drugs carry, by drug trafficking, it carries a death penalty. And it carries uh, punishment for bringing in drugs into the country. And for using those kind of serious drugs and stuff, there are punishments. So they make, they ask, the reason they have the punishment, it wasn't mentioned, it's not mentioned specifically in the Quran or specifically in the Sunnah. For example, uh, marijuana or cocaine or other narcotics. They weren't mentioned specifically. So this is important for us to understand why we look at this as haram. And because a lot of people, and I would have to say in the situation that I've heard, they're always ignorant of the religion, who try to make this and say, hey, marijuana, drugs, they're not haram. Because they're not mentioned in the Quran. And it's not mentioned in the Sunnah. Show me when the Quran and the Sunnah. These people don't really know much about Islam. And, and, and I'm not saying just that they don't know. Fine, they might know the pillars. They might know six pillars of Iman. They might know this. But this is hujjah batil and jahil. This is a type of ignorance. And it's a type of ignorance regarding any a studied person. Any person who is actually Allah has favored to study something of the religion. Any kind of talab al ilm would not say such a thing like this. That they would know, as we mentioned countless times now, in, especially in this dars, about the four types of evidence. The Quran, the Sunnah, the consensus, the ijma, and qiyas, analogy. This is the qiyas now. Now we see in the qiyas coming into play. And this is in accordance with the ulama with the scholars of Islam. And this is in accordance with the delil of the Quran and the Sunnah. So just because something is not explicit, explicitly mentioned as haram or halal or what have you, in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, doesn't mean that we can, from our own desires, make a judgment based upon that. But rather we have to go to Ahlul Ilm, the people who know the Quran and the Sunnah, and know the reasons and the wisdoms behind different nusus. For those nusus that we have uh, um, the hikmah for them. And know how to deal with these texts and know how to and know the usul, usul of fiqh. وَقْوَائِدُ الْفِقِيَ These sciences regarding fiqh principles. And these sciences regarding those those principles pertinent to jurisprudence and how to how to look at evidence in the Quran and the Sunnah and how to deduce evidence. All this, this these are sciences. These aren't things that we can play with and that we can say halal or haram. But it takes ahl al fiqh. And again, this is another reason of going back to the importance. May yuridullahu bihi khayran fiqhu fi din. That Allah subhanahu that the Prophet ﷺ said, whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them fiqh of uh, of the religion. So again, this requires fiqh. And this is going back to the point that we just mentioned that the reason the, and the Sheikh gave this beautiful example that they make a qiyas between drugs and khamr from the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they make this qiyas due to something they share in common a, a reason they share in common that they both cause harm to the body and they both uh, do something to your intellectual capacity. They both alter your intellect and have a negative effect on your intellect, even if it's a stimulant, even if it's something that stimulates your intellect, speed or whatever, it makes you more alert, but it still has negative effects on your intellect and your body. These things have effect on your brain cells and they're still you know, causing other side effects, whether it's LSD, whether it's ecstasy, whether it's whatever, but they have, they share an illa with khamr, the asl, which is khamr from the time of the Prophet Sallallahu So that is where their tahrim, that is where their haram, that's what makes them haram. So it's absolutely necessary for us to understand that and be able to deal with those shubahat that the people bring about. Then the Shaykh, he mentions 
various types of qiyas and we'll go over them quickly and in the next lesson we will uh, expound upon them or at least review them. He said the first type of qiyas, qiyas al-shamuli. So the shaykh, because he is uh, a faqih, you know, he's, he's very, um, uh, you know, a scholar of jurisprudence and very much, you know, a lot of his, his books are in fiqh, a soul of fiqh and things like this. He, he, give, he comes at things from this angle and he gives you, he expounds upon those matters. He says the first type of qiyas is qiyas al-shamuli. And he says... That this means, this is uh, in reference to a principle, a qa'idah, which includes many different single examples. A general principle, which includes gen, uh, uh, many separate examples, or separate, yeah, separate cases or case studies, you could say. And this is why it's called qiyas al-shamuli. Shamuli meaning shamal, meaning to, uh, or, or meaning um, that is inclusive. This is the qiyas analogy by inclusiveness. And also some of the scholars, the scholars of jurisprudence, of uh, as he says, that some of the scholars of usul, the scholars of usul of fiqh, they, instead they call this uh, amum. They call this amum, general. This is a general, that under the general, the general includes many different examples. So if we have an example that we say this hand, the hand is general, okay? And it includes, but that includes, when we say the hand, it includes these fingers, these five fingers, okay? And that's amum. Amum, we say hand. So we're making a reference in hand, which includes these five fingers. So this is what we mean by qiyas uh, shamuli is that it's a general rule or principle of qiyas which includes many different examples and then he gives us an example of this and this also is referred as we mentioned it's called umum by the usuliin and he says women amthilatihi qawli qawli nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam so from the examples is the statement of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam where he said kullu muaskir haram the Prophet Wasallam said, and this is also very relevant to our situation because recently I've had discussions with some brothers and they're wondering about medical marijuana and they're bringing up all these things. May Allah forgive us and them and guide us and them to that which is correct. But the general principle is right here. The Prophet Wasallam said, Kullu mu'askir haram. He said everything which causes you to cause drunkenness or you know some sort of state of altering your your intellect like this is haram the prophet sallallahu alaihi said that and that is a hadith rawahu bukhari wa muslim an abi ash an, an abi uh, musa al ashari radiyallahu ta'ala anhu so that is an example of uh of qiyas al shamuli The second example the Sheikh mentioned of Qiyas, he said Qiyas Temthili. And we'll do our best to try to translate this and, and bring it out. Qiyas Temthili, Aladi Yatamathil Fihi al Fara Mal Asal. So this is where you are you have a, a main issue in this type of Qiyas, you're making an analogy between a main issue and a branch of that issue. Uh, issue. And let's see what the Shaykh gives us as an example. And uh, what he says here, because because again, remember we're talking about qiyas it, uh, that's what Imam Ahmed is talking about when he said la qiyas fi sunnah, he's talking about qiyas per pertinent to the aqidah. So again, we've got to keep this in the context of aqidah. Okay? So he says here, uh, half of the Allah Ta'ala, the Shaykh says, he says, wa have la yujuz fi haqillah bi nisbati lil makhluk. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ جَلَّ وَعَلَى مُنَزِّهٌ عَنْ مُشَابَهَةِ عَنْ مُشَابَهَةِ الْمَخْلُوقِ كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ فَلَا يُصِحْ أَنْ يُقَاسْ بِهِ الْخَالِقْ عَلَى الْمَخْلُوقِ Beautiful statement, which we have to get this in. 
So regarding Qiyas Temthili, you know, making a Qiyas analogy from example, he said that this is not permissible. So we're, again, we're talking about Aqidah. This is not permissible regarding the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By making a Qiyas between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making a Qiyas between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I'm not making gestures in, in reference to our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is from my own expressionism, to clarify that. But to make qiyas between uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His creation, the, the makhluk, that's, that's completely uh, haram, not permissible in Islam, and uh, not possible. In fact, to really make it sahih. So, and then he said, and that is due to the fact that verily Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, Allah the Almighty, the Majestic, is free from any resemblance with His creation. He's free from that. <coughs> and this is attested or affirmed in the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where He says, Laysa kamithli hishay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there is nothing comparable to him. So that's why that kind of, uh, that qiyas, you don't make qiyas with the creator of the heavens and his creation. So that's also, of course, that's pertaining to what? To creed. Because we can't make any comparison between Allah, our Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and his creation. We don't say like this, like such and such, and this and that and the other. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divine names and attributes. And those attributes in their perfection and in their completeness are only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, as the ayah says, the very same ayah, basir, that there is nothing comparable to him, and he is the all seeing, the all hearing. Letting us know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees and he hears, but his is perfect. And there's no comparison between, and as, as the beginning of the ayah says, says, There is nothing comparable to him. And he is the all-hearing and all-seeing. So Allah negates that there's any qiyas, and that there's any comparison, any analogy between him and his creation, and he affirms that he has attributes. We have attributes too. We hear and see. I can hear and see. But my hearing and seeing is unlike my Lord, so there's no qiyas between them. My Lord hears and sees, but He hears everything and He sees everything. I can only see as far as uh, some trees behind here, and not very far. The camera even picks up only so much. It picks up some of the clouds, maybe the mountain drop in the back in the background, very little bit. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sees everything. No comparison between our Lord Subhanahu wa Taala and His creation. That qiyas is la yajus. This qiyas between the Creator and His creation. Then the last type of qiyas the Shaykh mentioned, he said, Athalath qiyas al awlawi He said the, the third type is the qiyas al awlawi And he said, He said, this qiyas is permissible with regards to the haq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he gives an example. He says, and from our examples, he says, a principle here, so we'll bring the principle and then we'll translate it. Kulu kamal thabata lil makhluk la yatatarraq la yatatarraqu ilayhi an naqs bihal fal khalik awla an yatasaf bi. So this is qiyas al awlawi. That every every uh Every affirmation of something that is perfect and complete in the creation, okay, perfect and complete, meaning that it is uh, it's good and it's it's complete. That has to be that's in the creation from Babel Ola. In you know, first and foremost, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. 
is complete in this regard. Meaning that Allah is, is, is complete. He's perfect, subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, uh, uh, as, as we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better, we'll, we'll restrict ourselves with the text as this is a bit of a complex matter. So the Sheikh doesn't give us any examples. He just gives us this principle. And then he goes into depth and we'll try to look through that and see if we can see some examples. But first and foremost, if we say something in the creation is uh, has completeness, then even more so our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala has full completeness and perfection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. Tabarak wa ta'ala. And His divine names and attributes are all good. And they're all complete. And there's no, n- there's nothing negative and no shortcomings in His perfection, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and in His attributes. So anything in the creation, this is called qiyas, anyhow, qiyas al olui And then another example, the Shaykh mentions one other principle, Per, within that Qiyas uh, al he mentions which is the opposite of that. He said, وَمِثْلَهُ قَوْلَنَا كُلُّ نَقْسْ تُنَزِّهُ عَنْهُ الْمَخْلُوقِ فَالْخَالِقْ أَوْلَى أَنْ يُنَزِّهُ عَنْهُ وَهَكَذَا <clears throat> So then he mentioned as another example of a principle that fits into Qiyas al that every shortcoming that we mention regarding the creation, first and foremost, Allah is free from that shortcoming. Okay? So if there was a shortcoming that we mentioned, or something negative, that even the creation doesn't do or doesn't fall into... Allah is even more free from that. This is Qiyas al olui Not a comparison between Allah and His creation. Absolutely not. But this is Qiyas regarding that principle, regarding that if the creation, uh, the, the creation, meaning those th- created beings, are free from such and such attribute, or they themselves, you know, that's beneath them. Then first and even greater so, our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from that. And that's just, that's sufficient for us to know it's a bit more in depth than we probably needed to go with regard. But it just gives us an idea about this principle of qiyas and with regards to aqidah. And the shaykh, jazallah khairan and, 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 and may Allah preserve him you know, goes into depth and gives us a lot of great benefit. And then he brings the ayat, وَلِلَّهِ الْمِثْلُ أَعْلَى where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and uh, with Allah is the highest of examples, that you can't make an example or comparisons with your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no qiyas there. You can't... Uh, that he he has the highest of examples, and we should not make uh, try to make uh, resemblance between the Creator and His creation. These are just some of the uh, important things, and we'll leave off there, as that is a bit heavy for us to di- digest. And may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bless us with al nafi rizqan tayba wa amal mutaqabbilan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our sins. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from ourselves, was from myself in the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.